Today's activity is a very interesting one. It is a super fun experiment which can be performed at a science fair, your home or the chemistry lab. Energy is stored in the form of molecular bonds. When these bonds split apart, the energy released can be used to do work. For today's activity, you will need a few materials like batteries, wires, two iron nails and some salt. You must tape the nails and the wires properly, otherwise the wires may interfere with the reactions. This will teach you about electrolysis of water which will result in the formation of hydrogen. One thing that should be kept in mind is that the nails should not be rusted initially because the rust forms a protective layer around the metal and will not allow the iron to react. This guide will help you understand what's going on in the experiment. After you have performed your experiment with the cells, wires and iron nails, you might be curious about what made the color of the water change and what made the nail rust. When you pass electric current through a solution, the ions move towards the opposite electrodes, in this case the sodium and chloride. Thus the chloride ions move towards the anode and the sodium ions move towards the cathode. One of the iron nails gets corroded or rusted and you see the difference in color due to the multiple reactions occurring in the solution. How do we do variations on this experiment? The electrodes can be changed into conducting materials like copper, graphite or magnesium. The solution can be changed by changing the solvent, that is the liquid. We've used water but you can try with others such as alcohol and or changing the salt, which is the electrolyte or the solute that is used. Try using copper sulfate solution with copper electrodes and iron rods with copper sulfate solution. The power source can be changed as well into higher current supplies by adding more batteries, for example. One interesting variation is using two pencils instead of iron nails. Take two pencils and sharpen them from both the ends. Dip one end of both the pencils in the aqueous medium and attach the other ends with the wire to the two terminals of the cell. You will see bubbles coming out of the tips of the pencils and coming up. This happens as the pencils act as the electrodes and the graphite transports electricity. As soon as the current starts flowing from the cell to the water, its ions dissociate into hydroxyl, which is OH-, and hydrogen, which is H+, ions. Now the pencil attached to the negative terminal of the battery collects hydrogen while the one connected to the positive terminal of the battery collects hydroxyl ions. Now you might notice something unusual. You will find more bubbles near one pencil than the other. Can you tell why? Which pencil collects more bubbles? Try the same thing after adding salt to the water. Do you observe any difference? When we eat food, what helps it to break down? The answer, as you all might know, is water. The process of digestion begins in the mouth with saliva, which contains mainly water and many enzymes. In the stomach too, where lots of enzymes, microbes and acids aid in digestion, the predominant ingredient is water. The process of digestion is a great example of hydrolysis. The meaning of hydrolysis is the breaking down of a compound due to the reaction with water. Hydro means water and lysis means to unbind. So hydrolysis is quite useful both in biology as explained above and chemistry. In this guide we will focus more on the chemistry involved in hydrolysis or electrolysis. The term electrolysis is defined as the chemical decomposition of a compound produced by passing an electric current through a liquid or a solution carrying ions. Before going through the guide, you should know a little bit about atoms, molecules and ions. Atoms are the smallest unique unit of a particular element. In nature, only the noble gases are generally non-reactive. They would appear to have a stable arrangement of electrons. It's only these noble gases that can be found as isolated atoms. Most matter is in the form of ions, molecules or compounds. A molecule is comprised of two or more chemically bonded atoms. The atoms may be of the same type of element or they may be different. Many elements are found in nature in their molecular form. That is two or more atoms of the same type of element bonded together. Oxygen, for example, is most commonly found in its molecular form O2. Two oxygen atoms bonded together. 
An example of a commonly occurring compound that is composed of two different types of atoms is pure water or H2O. The nucleus of an atom, which contains both protons and neutrons, remains unchanged after ordinary chemical reactions, but atoms can readily gain or lose electrons. If electrons are lost or gained by a neutral atom, then the result is that a charged particle is formed, and this is called an ion. For example, sodium has 11 protons and 11 electrons. However, it can easily lose one electron. The resulting cation has 11 protons and 10 electrons for an overall net charge of plus 1. The unit of the charge is electronic charge. The ionic state of an atom or compound is represented by a superscript to the right of the chemical formula. For example, as shown here with Na plus or Mg2 plus. Note that in the case of 1 plus or 1 minus, the 1 is usually emitted from the nomenclature. In contrast to the sodium atom, the chlorine atom easily gains one electron to yield the chloride ion, which is Cl minus, that is 17 protons and 18 electrons. Now you should also know about chemical solutions and the solutes. In chemistry, a solution is a homogeneous mixture composed of two or more substances. A solute is a substance dissolved in another substance known as a solvent. As explained earlier, hydrolysis is useful both in biology and chemistry. You must be wondering what hydrolysis has to do with biology. In biology, the applications of hydrolysis, as explained earlier, have a lot to do with digestion and range from breaking sugar molecules down in a body to participate in the release of stored energy from ATP, which is adenosine triphosphate. This little known molecule known as ATP, is the powerhouse that stores energy in our body. We get this energy from the food that we eat. In order to get energy from the food, the molecular bonds in the ATP must be broken. And this is where hydrolysis comes in. You may get a better idea from the diagram below. Now we will look into the applications of hydrolysis in chemistry. In chemistry, it can be defined as the reaction of cation or anion or both with the water molecule due to which its pH is altered, wherein the cleavage of the HOH bonds occur. Hydrolysis is called the opposite of the condensation reactions, where two molecules join together to form a larger one and eject a water molecule. During hydrolysis, water and the other reactants, or both, may be split into two or more parts. Hydrolysis reactions are generally one of three different types salt hydrolysis, acid hydrolysis, and base hydrolysis. Although the breakdown of the water molecule is applied to all the types, the reactants vary. Salt hydrolysis is where a soluble ionic salt is dissolved in water. The water also quickly ionizes into hydroxide anions and hydrogen cations, which then hydrate to form hydronium ions, which is H3O+. The salt, in our case sodium chloride, when dissolved in water, breaks into sodium ions and chloride ions. This reaction happens because water is a polar molecule and hence has the ability to break apart the salt molecule into their separate ions. An acid or base behaves as a catalyst, which drives the reaction forward towards completion. An acid hydrolysis reaction involves water behaving as an acid and donates an H plus ion, also a proton, into the solution. This reaction can be carried out in the presence of acids like HCl, which is hydrogen chloride or hydrochloric acid, or H2SO4, that's hydrogen sulfate or sulfuric acid. For example, the reaction below, where ethyl acetate and water can be heated and you get acetic acid and ethanol. Here, ethyl acetate is an ester which reacts with water to form an acid and an alcohol. In the above reaction, the ester is boiled in water, a base hydrolysis resembles a reaction for base dissociation. A very common weak base that dissociates in water is ammonia. The reaction is as follows. In the hydrolysis of ammonia, the ammonia molecule accepts a proton from water, thereby producing a hydroxide ion as a byproduct. Now both these reactions follow a theory known as Bronsted-Lowry acid theory. In 1923, 
chemists Johannes Nicholas Bronsted and Thomas Martin Lowry independently developed definitions of acids and bases based on the compound's abilities to either donate or accept protons, that is, hydrogen ions. In this theory, acids are defined as proton donors, whereas bases are defined as proton acceptors. A compound that acts as both, which is a bronsted lowry acid and base, is called amphoteric. A very simple theory which is followed to find out if the substance is a base or an acid is to count the hydrogen atoms in the compound before and after the reaction. If the number of hydrogen atoms has decreased, that substance is the acid, that is, it donates hydrogen ions. If the number of hydrogen atoms has increased, that substance is the base, that is, it accepts hydrogen ions. Now let's talk a little bit about electrolysis. The term electrolysis was first coined by Michael Faraday in the 19th century on the suggestion of Reverend William Vewell, using the Greek words lectron, which is amber, and lysis, which is dissolution. Electrolysis is a process where an electric current is passed through a solution to cause the chemical change. This is the process that you have performed in your experiment. As stated earlier, every ionic compound consists of ions e.g. sodium chloride contains positively charged sodium ions and negatively charged chloride ions. When such ionic compounds are dissolved in water, the ions become free to move. During electrolysis, the positively charged ions move towards the negative electrode and the negatively charged ions move towards the positive electrode. Thus, the positively charged ions receive electrons and the negatively charged ions lose electrons. Similarly, in your experiment, when you pass electricity through the salt solution, the sodium and the chlorine ions get collected at their respective electrodes. The metal compounds and or metals get precipitated and the gases escape. Electrolysis is widely used for electroplating. It is a process of coating one metal with another by the process of hydrolysis. This prevents corrosion of the base metal. It must be noted that there are four main industrial ways of producing hydrogen from natural gas, oil, coal and via electrolysis. Out of these, globally the least amount of hydrogen is produced by electrolysis, around 4% of the total hydrogen produced in the world. Although electrolysis is one of the best options for producing hydrogen from renewable sources, this is only because all the other sources produce byproducts like carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, and other greenhouse gases. Electrolysis dissociates water into hydrogen and oxygen. This reaction takes place in a unit called an electrolyzer. Electrolyzers consist of an anode and a cathode separated by an electrolytic medium. A simple diagram below will help you understand it better. Water reacts at the anode to form oxygen and positively charged hydrogen ions. The electrons flow through an electric circuit and the hydrogen ions move across the membrane called polymer electrolyte membrane towards the cathode. Here the hydrogen ions combine with the electrons from the external circuit to form hydrogen gas. The reaction taking place inside the units are, as seen here, the cathode reaction and the anode reaction. What's happening in the experiment that was just concluded? Why does it appear so complicated with so many precipitates and changes? First of all, let us look at the chemical composition of the reactants used. There was iron in the nails. At the anode, ferric ions are formed. There's the electrolyte that consists of sodium chloride dissolved in water. The sodium chloride and the water dissociate into ions. Now we shall see what reactions these may undergo. Hydrogen chloride is formed. Sodium hydroxide is formed. Chloride ions react with the ferric ions to form ferric chloride. Ferrous ions react with the hydrogen chloride to form ferrous chloride and hydrogen gas. The ferrous chloride, ferric chloride and sodium hydroxide react to form the green precipitate. This is a complex crystal structure of both ferrous and ferric hydroxychloride. The idealized formula is given here as well, which consists of iron hydroxide, sheets which alternate with interlayers made of chloride ions and water molecules. Truly very complicated 
reactions that go on in this reaction and giving us interesting colors and precipitates. With some of the other variations, you get simpler reactions as you can analyze by the variations, for example, copper and copper sulfate. May be worth trying to figure out what the reactions there are. Some scientific terms that we've used. pH is a figure expressing the acidity or alkalinity of a solution on a logarithmic scale on which 7 is neutral. Lower values are more acidic and higher values are more alkaline. Mathematically defined as the negative logarithm with base 10 of the hydrogen ion concentration in a solution. A catalyst is a substance that increases the rate of a chemical reaction without undergoing any permanent chemical change itself. The bronsted lowry theory, according to this theory, an acid is a proton donor and a base is a proton acceptor. An electrolyzer is a vessel with an electrolyte in which electrodes, a cathode and an anode, have been placed. The cathode is connected to the negative pole and the anode is connected to the positive pole. A polar molecule is one where a neutral molecule orients itself as a dipole with partial opposing charges in different directions. For example, water, which has a triangular molecular shape where the hydrogen atoms form the positive base of the triangle and the oxygen atom the negative vertex. Today's power grid is not very ideal for providing the electricity required for electrolysis because of the emission of the harmful greenhouse gases and the ample amount of energy used. This also requires high amount of fuel due to the low efficiency of the electricity generation processes. Hydrogen produced via electrolysis is being pursued for renewable and nuclear energy options. Renewable energy like wind energy can be effectively used to perform this. Electrolysis, as said earlier, is used for electroplating metals like copper, gold or silver. It results in the synthesis of useful chemicals. Substances like organophosphates and sulfonyl urea esters are hydrolyzed to form chemicals and pesticides. Hydrolysis of sucrose results in the production of glucose and fructose, which is widely used in the food industry. Soap is another product formed by hydrolysis. Hydrolysis is the process by which chemical compounds are broken apart by addition of water and electrolysis is a process of splitting the ions of a compound by passing electricity in an aqueous medium. The gases formed in electrolysis are hydrogen and oxygen as in an abundance of water. Producing hydrogen through electrolysis is a common method used as it does not result in the production of greenhouse gases which happens in other production methods. As normal water is not a very good conductor of electricity, it is better to add some electrolyte like salt to speed up the reaction. We hope you have enjoyed this activity and guide and look forward to seeing you in the future. Thank you.